What does binge eating during a migraine attack and period cravings have in common? Could it be a magnesium deficiency? The answer is yes, and I will explain. Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Sarah Zaldivar, and this channel is dedicated to helping you achieve your optimal body weight. I know the feeling very well. You've been doing everything right, you've been losing weight and following your meal plan to a T, and then out of the blue, you get hit with that migraine headache and you just cannot fathom to stick to your meal plan and you're craving carbs and sugars and maybe even in some cases, those foods are actually curing your migraine and so it becomes a very easily propagated habit. And if you're female, the same thing also could be compounded the next day or the day after when you get your period and that simulates cravings and the pain from the cramps makes it very difficult to stick to a bland diet that's not as dopamine producing as sugary and carbohydrate rich foods. Well, what if you can stop that cycle by making sure you're getting enough magnesium? Why magnesium? That's because a magnesium deficiency could cause a wide range of conditions that make sticking to your fitness plan very difficult. And those are depression, anxiety, period cramps and pain, insomnia, headaches, irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, insulin resistance, and even hypothyroidism. And unfortunately, our current lifestyle is depleting our magnesium levels. You see, magnesium levels could be depleted by chronic stress, diuretics, think caffeine, alcohol, hypertension drugs, the consumption of sugars and carbohydrates, and even taking drugs such as antidepressants, antibiotics, and acid, some anti-seizure drugs, and birth control pills. And I'm gonna add one more thing, which is our current fear of salt and our low salt diets also contributes to a magnesium deficiency. However, I'm gonna talk more about that in a future video. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. Hit that notification bell icon so you are alerted every time I post a new video. Salt is needed to transport magnesium to inside our cells. And so if you're not getting enough salt, then you cannot transport magnesium into your cells. It doesn't matter to just take kin magnesium. You want your cells to open up and take up that magnesium from your blood into your cells. So how do you avoid and correct a magnesium deficiency? First, be aware that you need 300 milligrams of magnesium per day if you are female and 400 milligrams per day if you're male. Then you wanna focus on eating foods that are high in magnesium. Also, you could choose certain bottled or tap water that are rich in magnesium. And finally, you could supplement. What are some foods that are particularly rich in magnesium? One ounce of roasted pumpkin seeds has 156 milligrams per serving. One ounce of chia seeds has 111 milligrams of magnesium. One ounce of dry roasted almonds has 80 milligrams of magnesium. Half a cup of boiled spinach has 78 milligrams of magnesium. It is important to boil spinach because that's also how you deactivate the oxalates in the spinach. More on oxalates in a future video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I go in depth with regards to certain vegetables and plant foods and, and their oxalates and how that could be causing you multiple health problems that are making weight loss really, really difficult. One ounce of dry roasted cashews has 74 milligrams of magnesium. A quarter cup of oil roasted peanuts has 63 milligrams of magnesium. And a three and a half serving of shrimp has 39 milligrams of magnesium. Most people can get enough magnesium from food or water alone. And for that reason, it's truly important that we supplement. That is one of the supplements that I make sure I take on a daily basis, and that's completely minimized the number of headaches that I normally get, and that made sticking to my diet plan a lot more effortless. There are multiple forms of magnesium that you could supplement with. Most of them work well except for magnesium sulfate, which is also known as Epsom salt, and that's because you cannot absorb magnesium magnesium via the skin. There is no study that has ever proven that you can actually absorb the magnesium through the skin. Another form that you want to stay away from is magnesium oxide. That's the cheapest, most common form of magnesium that you can find over the counter. And you don't want to take that to raise your magnesium levels because that's only absorbed at a rate of 4% by the body. 
Also, you may have heard it by another name called milk of magnesia, and that's why people take milk of magnesia in order to stimulate a bowel movement. And the way that magnesium can do that is because it is not absorbed into the body. That's why it has this laxative effect. For your convenience, I will link below a bunch of brands of magnesium that are high quality and that I feel comfortable recommending to you and that I personally take as well. It's also important to note that because magnesium can have this calming effect, sometimes you may not want to take it early in the morning before a workout where you really need a bunch of energy there. So ideally it's best to take it in the afternoon or in the evening, um, especially if you feel like it's causing you excessive sleepiness, then make sure you take it only in the evening and maybe cut down on the dose a little bit. Finally, if you're curious to know what your blood level of magnesium is, you may want to ask for a red blood cell magnesium test. And that's different than the most commonly ordered one, which is the serum magnesium blood test. The serum magnesium blood test is completely useless because it tells us nothing about whether or not your body's actually utilizing that magnesium. If the cells are actually opening up and taking up the magnesium for it to do its effects. For that reason, you want to specify to your physician to order a red blood cell magnesium test and not just the generic serum magnesium level. If this video helped you out, make sure you hit that like button. Also make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell button so you are alerted the next time I post similar videos. Also make sure you share with your friends and family if you feel that this information could help them out. Also, I would love to hear your thoughts about this video in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.